If I'm so utterly sinful, I can't even choose Jesus, what right does he have to judge me? If I can't choose good judgment against me, uh, would be unjust. No. Everyone gets what they want except for the Christian. That's the truth. I'll close with this story. It will illustrate this point. Every single human being has chosen to sin against, rebel against, run from God. And God lets them go. And everyone except the Christian gets exactly what their will chooses. It is the Christian who would have the declaration that God is being unjust because he's not giving them what they want. Not the non-Christian. The non-Christian runs from God, ends up in hell. That is exactly what they wanted. The Christian runs from God to hell. He grabs them, takes them to heaven. If anyone should complain, it should be him. You violated my free will. True story. Some of you are still there. You're like, I'm that Christian. I know I'm saved. I'm just not excited about it. I was hoping to be naked for longer and he ruined everything. I'll close with a serious story. Here's how I see it. I was listening to the radio some time ago and this preacher, pastor, Bible guy on the radio, he normally does a pretty good job. He said, quote, the doctrine of election presents God as a rapist and not a lover, end quote. And I freaked out, as I always do. And his point was, it is rape for God to override our will. And my answer is, God, in fact, does override the will of the elect. But he does so not as a rapist abusing a victim, but as a loving father saving a foolish child. Some years ago, my wife and I, Grace, we we lived on Montlake Boulevard right next to Husky Stadium. Four lanes of traffic, people flying by really fast, School lets out, game lets out, tens of thousands of people. And on one occasion, my daughter Ashley was young at the time, perhaps two or three years of age. We were going to put her in the car, and she turned and ran away from us toward the traffic. And it was very close distance from our house to the street. And we grabbed her, sat her down, said, Honey, it's dangerous out there. There's cars. They can't see you. You'll die. You will die. We continually explain this to her. Don't run away. Stay with mommy and daddy. Don't run into traffic. She obeyed for some time. And then one day, had my hands full, was going to put something in the car, and then I was going to grab her and put her in the car, and I glanced out of the corner of my eye, and she was running as fast as she could with her little ponytail bouncing right into traffic on Montlake Boulevard. Cars flying by at like 40 miles an hour. And here goes my baby running into traffic, completely disobeying her dad. She's exercising her free will. She was unregenerate at that point. She now is regenerate. And her unregenerate will was disobedience. And as she ran, I preached to her repentance. Ashley, stop! Ashley, stop! Come back to your daddy. That is repentance. Coming back to your daddy. And I looked, and she was getting near the street, and I start running immediately. And I'm preaching at her, and I'm pursuing her. And parked right in front of our house is a car, and she's so little, she's running in front of the parked car, right into traffic, which means that any oncoming car will not see her coming. She will be in the line of traffic before they see her. My little girl was going to die. And I see this enormous truck barreling down the street, going perhaps 40 miles an hour. Now I have, I've revealed my heart. I love her. 
I presented this free invitation to repent. I have called her back to myself. And she is exercising her unregenerate will. And so I exercise my loving father desire and I pursue her. I'm calling to her and I'm pursuing her. And she steps out in front of the car into traffic and I grabbed her literally by the back of her little coat and I yanked her literally right out of the way of the oncoming truck. It seriously was inches that she was missed by a truck going 40 miles an hour that didn't even hit the brakes because it didn't even have time to see her. My daughter barely lived. That is election. Where the father in love pursues foolish, obstinate, disobedient children who have chosen death and he decrees that more important than their will is his love. And anyone who is here and is a Christian should thank God that not only did he call out to them, but he pursued them. And that in Jesus Christ, he extended a hand and he grabbed them and he yanked them unto himself. And anyone else who would run from God has no right to declare him unjust. They're morally responsible for their own rebellion. And if you are here tonight and you are a Christian, you should praise God that you have a loving father who has grabbed you by the neck and spared you from Satan's sin, death, wrath, judgment, and conscious eternal torment in hell. He owes you nothing, but he has given you all things. And if you are here tonight and you are not a Christian, Don't play philosophical games with the living God. Don't argue with him about him not being good. Don't argue with him about him having no right to judge you. You are revealing the same hardness of heart as Pharaoh. And this sermon may be God's means by which your hard heart becomes revealed to you so that you would take God seriously. You would take yourself lightly, that you would come to your senses and that you would return to your father. That you would receive his hand of salvation extended to you through the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The question is not, is God unjust? The question is, do we trust him? That is the question. 